Last year we made a video about some of the most messed up horror movie endings ever, but let's face it, this is an entire genre built around climaxes made to scare you silly. As a result, we had to leave so many great ones off that list that definitely deserve the spotlight. So, in the grand tradition of horror movies, we figured it was about time for a sequel. Let's just hope we're definitely an Evil Dead 2 and not a, uh, a Troll 2. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 more horror movies with seriously messed up endings. Number 10, No Escape. Thanks to the joys of social media and vlogging, more and more people are becoming famous for their online personas and for pushing the envelope when it comes to fresh, unique, capital C content. Written and directed by Will Wernick, last year's No Escape explored the concept of YouTube fame brilliantly by throwing the spotlight over Keegan Allen's Cole Turner. An image-obsessed online celebrity with millions of followers, Cole's speciality is his escape from reality show. To mark the 10th anniversary of his channel, Cole takes his girlfriend and friends to Russia to to explore an escape room. Being a horror film though, the intense terrors of this escape room are actually real, with Moscow mobster Andre overseeing proceedings. With Cole tied to a chair, he has to witness the torture and death of those closest to him by Andre. Once Cole finally manages to escape though, he comes face to face with the torturer and beats him to death with his bare hands. In a pretty awkward moment though, Cole's girlfriend and pals resurface with the side-splitting reveal that all of what I've just said was just a prank done to celebrate escape from reality's 10 years on air. The part that wasn't a hoax though, well, that was Cole just brutally beating a dude to death, with no escape ending with the grim realization that Cole Turner has just killed a man. Number 9. Buried Buried finds Ryan Reynolds' Paul Conroy trapped in a coffin buried underground in the middle of Iraq. A US truck driver stationed in the country, Paul and his colleagues are suddenly attacked. By the time Paul regains consciousness, he finds himself buried alive with only a select few items such as a cell phone, lighter and a knife at hand. The crux of this claustrophobia inducing effort sees Paul using his Blackberry to contact 911, the FBI, the State Department and have several back and forths with Dan Brenner of the hostage working group. Brenner eventually has details on where to find Paul's coffin and audiences get a pulsating tense final few minutes as a rescue team frantically dig where Brenner assures Paul via phone that he's going to be okay, just as sand piles into the casket. In an utter gut punch of a finale though, it's revealed how Brenner and his team had actually been led to the site of another buried coffin. From there, Paul's coffin is engulfed by sand as he suffocates to death. Number 8. Funny Games What's most messed up about the ending of Funny Games is how the character of Paul looks at the audience with a knowing wink to make you aware that he and Peter are about to carry out a whole bunch of atrocities on another unsuspecting family. It's an ending that makes you feel dirty and almost compliant in whatever is about to happen after the credits. Whether it's the 1997 Austrian picture or the 2007 US remake, Funny Games punishes its audience nearly as much as it punishes the family at its core. Plot-wise, Funny Games sees Peter and Paul turn up at the holiday home of the Afro mentioned family. Initially just looking to borrow some eggs, the duo begin to torment and torture the mother, father, son, and even the dog. Once the film gets going, the pooch and son are swiftly killed. And just as the film gives you a glimmer of hope, that being the mother breaking free and fatally shooting Peter, Paul grabs the TV remote, hits rewind, and erases the mother's escape and Peter's death. From there, the father is killed and the mother has her body casually dumped into some water to drown as Peter and Paul head to the next household. Number 7. Mirrors Alexandra Arja's 2008 movie Mirrors ends with a monumental shocker, as Kiefer Sutherland's Ben Carson realises that he's dead and stranded in the paradoxical mirror world. Prior to this, Ben had found himself in the midst of a plot involving evil mirror versions of people, demonic possession, and had his family targeted by the sinister past of the Mayflower department store where he works. The final act of Mirrors sees Ben in the depths of the Mayflower, which of course used to be a psychiatric hospital, in a fight to save his son. In order to take down the demonic threat of the day, Ben explodes a gas line and brings down the entire building, before then emerging from the rubble to make it to safety. As the penny drops though, we see all the signs in his new reality are actually written backwards, and that Ben is actually within the mirror world, having not made it out of the building collapse alive. Number 6, Tusk. Kevin Smith's second foray into horror, Tusk sprung from a bizarre idea from the director's own podcast. When the picture made its way to screens in 2014, Smith showed that he was more than capable of delivering a disturbing body horror feature that still had plenty of old Kev's trademarks throughout it. Stuck in Manitoba, Canada, podcaster Wallace Brighton finds himself in need of a story guaranteed to bring in the hits. Taking the wheelchair-bound old sea dog Howard Howe up on his offer of a free place to stay, with Howe regaling Wallace with 
with stories of how a walrus called Mr. Tusk saved his life when he was lost at sea, Wallace suddenly passes out after supping some drugged tea. Once awake, Wallace has had his legs amputated. However, Howard no longer needs his wheelchair and details his plan to turn Wallace into a human walrus hybrid to make up for having actually eaten the previous Mr. Tusk. So the film ends with the transformed Wallace killing Howard with his walrus tusk and then being placed in a zoo to live out his life as an animal. Number 5. Audition For those who've seen Takashi Mike's audition, you're likely already haunted to this day by the chilling events of that 1999 picture. At the heart of audition we have widower Shigeharu Aoyama. Having struggled to move on with his life following the death of his wife, Shigeharu eventually accepts the advice of his son and filmmaker best friend by putting together an audition process to find him a new partner. And as soon as Shigeharu meets Asami, it seems like a happy ever after might be on the table, though that is far from what we get by the time audition ends. With the audience let in on glimpses of Asami's troubled upbringing, we see some, let's say, rather odd behaviour alongside a mutilated human being kept as a pet, and we get treated to the stomach-churning moment of seeing someone eat vomit. Still, that's not the worst of audition, for that delight is saved for the film's climax. Injecting Shigeharu with a paralytic agent that ooingly leaves his nerves intact. Asami sticks needles in her lover's eyes and cuts off one of his feet with piano wire, all of which is shown in disturbing, disgusting detail. Thankfully for Shigeharu though, at the very end his son just turns up in time to save the day and kicks Asami down some stairs, breaking her neck. Number 4. The Haunting of Julia For this entry, we've got Mia Farrow in a horror movie centred around a demonic youngster, and no, it's not that one. Nine years after Rosemary's Baby, Farrow was back in the world of the sinister with 1977's The Haunting of Julia. While Rosemary's Baby ended with Farrow's character giving birth to a demonic entity, The Haunting of Julia opens with Farrow's eponymous Julia witnessing the death of her daughter Kate. After Kate chokes at breakfast, Julia performs a makeshift tracheotomy that sadly sees the girl bleed to death. Ending her marriage to Magnus shortly after this, Julia moves into an old house where she starts to experience strange happenings. Initially thinking it's Magnus sneaking into her abode, Julia eventually discovers how she's being troubled by something relating to the death of a young boy Jeffrey from years prior. At the time a vagrant was blamed for this youngster's murder, although some digging discovers how a fellow child, Olivia, had corrupted her classmates to hold down Jeffrey as she smothered him with a coat and then castrated him. Viewed as pure evil, Olivia herself was then killed by her own mother. Once the final scene has Julia finally see the ghost of Olivia for the first time, there's no feel-good redemption here, as Julia instead has her throat slashed by a toy that belonged to her own deceased daughter. Number 3. The Vanishing no, we're not talking about the awful 1993 remake, but rather the 1988 original version of The Vanishing. The main problem with said remake, of course, is that the director, who did return to direct, decided to give the film a happy ending. For fans of the original, though, a major part of what made the movie stand out was that it had a soul-crushing finale. That movie followed a man named Rex, who is desperate to find out what happened to his missing girlfriend. He spends his time looking for Saskia, who disappeared when the two stopped at a service station during a trip through France a few years prior. The person behind Saskia's vanishing is Raymond, who has offered to meet Rex several times. When the two finally do connect towards the film's close, Raymond promises to reveal just what happened to Saskia. In order for Rex to find out the truth though, the catch is that he has to drink some drugged coffee. As Raymond explains, that's the only way to know and experience what really happened to Saskia. Having debated whether or not to sup the brew, Rex decides to drink back the coffee and discovers Saskia's fate. Unfortunately for him though, Rex then wakes up in a makeshift coffin and realises that he's been buried alive and then realises that this is exactly what happened to Saskia all those years ago. Number 2. The Dark and the Wicked Brian Patino has a marvellous eye for creating tension and atmosphere, and the filmmaker's talents are on full display in The Dark and the Wicked. Sadly slipping under the radar when it released late last year, largely due to the ongoing global pandemic, The Dark and the Wicked is a stripped back picture that's phenomenally paced across its 96 minute runtime. In this most recent Patino offering, the primary focus is on siblings Louise and Michael as they return to their Texas farmhouse home when they hear the news that their ill father is edging closer to taking his 
final breaths. While the Dark and the Wicked is very much a supernatural tale with a demonic presence, maybe even Satan himself tormenting the household, it's also one that explores distant families and the guilt that can be associated with that. For Louise and Michael, they're almost estranged from their parents by the time the movie opens, and there are constant themes of the impact of family love or lack thereof throughout the film. What's shocking about the movie's ending though is in how Michael is lured into slitting his own throat for his wife and children to find, and that the film's credits hit moments after Louise is grabbed by a demon just after her father had passed away. Number 1. Megan is Missing it's tough to put together any list based around messed up movie endings and then exclude Megan is Missing. Sure, it's a film that often gets discussed, especially on this channel, but seriously, the messed up finale means that it's impossible to ignore. So, in this movie, Rachel Quinn's 14-year-old Megan goes missing. Older skater Josh, who by the way gives Josh's everywhere a bad name, is the prime suspect in all of this, and Megan's pal Amy begins a doomed mission to discover the truth behind her BFF's disappearance. By the end of Megan is Missing, Amy has indeed found Megan, but this is very much a case of be careful what you wish for. Having discovered footage of Megan being abducted and images of her being tortured, Amy herself ends up kidnapped by Josh. When we next see her, the character is chained up to a wall in her underwear, forced to eat dog food, and then sexually assaulted. What's more shocking for audiences though comes when Amy is offered the chance at freedom. As per Josh, all Amy has to do is get into a barrel, but tragically we soon realise that this barrel contains the dead, decaying body of of Megan. As for Amy, she's forced into this barrel and then buried alive next to the corpses of her best friend. So yeah, that's like three entries on this list about people getting buried alive. It's just not nice, is it? Anyway, that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. What did you think about seeing these endings for the first time? And are there any harrowing ones I missed off here? Hey, who knows? Maybe we'll do a third one of these because there are just so many. Either way though, while you're down there, could you please give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't though, I've been Josh. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.